Good morning. Uh, for the record, I'm Warren Limmer, Chairman of the Judiciary and Crime Prevention Committee in the Senate. Today's agenda focuses on violence prevention. As a, as a reminder, we've had two informational hearings since December regarding this important subject. Minnesotans deserve a safe place to live, work, and play in, anywhere in the state. And yet we keep seeing a rising increase in violent crime being reported in our news agencies almost every single day. The, uh, the violent crime, as I said, is on the rise according to the reports of our newspapers. The homicide rate in St. Paul skyrocketed last year, and in large part due to gang violence and the rise in illicit drug trade. Police Chief Axtell has repeatedly warned us of the growing problem and that it's spreading in our state. As I mentioned before, we had informational hearings. The first one was in December. During that time, we reviewed for about four hours the existing gun laws and the firearm eligibility for owning those firearms uh, in our committee. We uh, did a very deep dive into what we know as existing law. B vitally important if you're going to consider any new gun laws, we need to have context of where Minnesota has been and where it might be going. Several of our members at that time contri recognized contributing factors to violence as it relates to gangs, domestic abuse, and mental illness. We also focused on reviewing uh, these current Minnesota gun laws, which revealed the strength of our gun laws, but it also revealed some inconsistencies and omissions. Between 2010 and 2018, the fastest growing crime in Minnesota is the possession of a firearm by a convicted felon who committed a crime of violence and therefore already ineligible to own a firearm. But in the last five years, 40% of the time, prosecutors and judges are refusing to sentence the mandatory minimum that the legislature established years ago for violent crimes committed by felons with guns. We have a specific mandatory sentence that we have advised the, the judiciary to follow. Again, 40% of the time they are refusing to sentence felons with a gun. In January, we had a hearing in Hibbing, Minnesota. We decided to have an opportunity for outstate Minnesota to give us their opinion and their reaction. And quite honestly, we had a very robust testimony in Hibbing on a wide variety of firearm proposals. We considered Senator Latz uh, and gave him a hearing at that time in Hibbing regarding his universal background checks and his red flag laws. We also considered other issues on the other side of the political spectrum, things like constitutional carry and stand your ground laws. As I've stated many times in the past, we have a reality that we have to deal with. We have a divided government. We have uh, a political spectrum that stretches across both, both sides. We have in the House, of course, we have it dominated by liberals, and in the Senate, we have it dominated by conservatives. Taking up any extreme gun bill is going to be very difficult to pass in the other chamber. So, We've now presented, or we will be presenting a committee hearing today recognizing specific proposals. I've been very clear that we need common sense solutions. I've had this discussion for about two years. Common sense solutions that we can all live with and we can claim a bipartisan victory on issues that face or that are concerning violence and violent per, violence prevention in the state of Minnesota. Today's bills are meant to build consensus that we will be hearing in, not only in our committee later this afternoon, but we'll also be learning of other proposals as well at this hearing. Uh, there are seven bills on the Judiciary Committee agenda today. 
uh, and uh, you'll be hearing a few more than just that.